At that moment in time, the world realized that kids might rule the world. They had their own music, their own fashion, their own money. Aha, all of a sudden they came in. Uh, bandstand was a hit maker because radio disc jockeys would listen, program directors listen to it and say, hmm, we better be playing that. So simultaneously, several hundred radio stations and the most important kid television station all played the same music. At that point, and it has been the case since time immemorial, you can bribe people to play your goods. In the old days, piano players in the Woolworth stores would get a $5 bill to play the sheet music so the customers would buy. Television radio came along, payola came up. Disc jockeys would play records for pay. It was well known. I never took any money to play records. I made money other ways. Since I only got $1,500 a week to produce seven and a half hours of television from ABC, I went into the music business. I was a manager of artists, a publisher of music, a uh, manufacturer, of, uh, uh, manufacturer of recordings. Horizontally, vertically, every single way you can think of, I made money from that show. One day a man offered me a hundred dollar bill to play a record and I asked him to leave. It's the only time anybody ever tried to, try to bribe me. Uh, people who worked for my record company were commissioned to pay disc jockeys to play records. It was normal. It was legal. We declared it. Uh, it was not illegal at that point. It became illegal in the early 1960s when the Congress said, no more of this, it's against the law, if you, you've broken the law, you can't do it. Still goes on to this day, except it isn't as blatant, it's much more subtle. Uh, I was dragged to Washington in 1959 or 60. They broke into my house, they tapped my phones. I found out that Big Brother's not always the good guy. I was raised in the Eisenhower era. It was a very illuminating experience. Uh, during the height of all of this, and they were you know, really, you know, it's not very interesting now because you know the government is crooked. You know that. You know politicians are not straight. We didn't know that then. I was invited to Walter Annenberg's house to a, a birthday party for one of his children at the height of the Piola investigations. He drew me aside. He was not the ambassador then, but the ambassador said to me, uh, is there anything you haven't told us? Is there anything that they could uncover? I told them everything. I kept all the records, showed them all the records, all the things I had interest in. I was just, why not? I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was an entrepreneur. He said, uh, is there anything that we need to know? I said, sir, I have told you everything. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. I hope I can live through this. He put his arm around me, and I'll never forget. He said, I don't know what he called me, my son or my boy, but he said he indicated he was older than I, and he was in his 40s then. I looked up to him as an older guy. I reminded him of that the other day when I thought he was real old at 40. He said to me, don't worry about this if that's true. They're going to put you in a giant crucible. They're going to boil you in oil, but you'll come out harder and smarter, and you will survive. And that's exactly what I was able to do.